Right, okay, there's loads of steps to doing this, all right? Um, and you will make mistakes and you miss things out. You can't break anything, okay? But obviously you can cock things up and stop them working. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load up fireworks. Should have done this before, really, but that's me all over. Um, I'm gonna load up fireworks. That's what I'm gonna create my graphic in. So I'm gonna create a sprite graphic. Um, they're quite fast, these SSDs, aren't they? Fireworks should start, it takes for ages to load up on my laptop. It's like, go to sleep. Right, so I want a new fireworks document. Now, the size of our graphics needs to be powers of two. All right, so that is 1,024 by 1,024, 512 by 512, up to 2,048, okay, by 2,048. If when you start doing this, you make something and you go, oh, I need more space, you can always increase the size of the canvas, all right? As long as you like anchor everything to the top left hand corner. So I'm just gonna do 1,024 by 1,024 on this. The reason we do that is because we don't want the graphics card to scale the texture once it's loaded up. And it will, because the graphics card's working powers of two to make them operate faster. All right, so if you have something that's 100 by 100, it'll scale it up to 128 by 128 internally for when it starts rendering. It won't make it look bigger, but it'll blur it because it uses bilinear filtering, which like blurs everything. Okay. Right, so I'll create my document. I want, at the end of the day, my canvas color to be transparent, but I'm gonna make it a dark gray so I can see what I'm doing. All right, so I'm just gonna create um, something for my, I want a title for my game that I'm gonna display on screen. I might do something jazzy with it, like make it like grow out of something. All right, but I want the graphics. So I'm gonna just do a bit of text. So I'm not gonna waste loads of time doing this. So uh, what should I call my game? Shizbot, I'm gonna call it, I think. Whatever that means. Shizbot. <coughs> and you can, you can put your own spin on what that means. That's pretty small. Um, so I'm gonna make it quite big. I'm making it 100% is my view. So this is how big it's gonna be when I draw it. Uh, let's pick a better font than Myriad Pro, whatever the hell that is. Comic Sans. No, <laughs> Comic Sans. Uh, one thing to note, if you want, if you've got a font that you've been on like 100,000 free fonts or whatever you've gone on, or the font, which is a good one actually, um, and you want to use those at co college, you need to bring them in so I can get the technicians to push it on the list and they will push the install of the fonts whenever everybody logs on. Otherwise you're going to lose your font definitions uh, and it means you won't be able to edit them again. So if you do find any jazzy fonts that you want to use, we need them so we can put them on. Uh, I'm going to use... <sighs> no, I'm not going to use that. Uh, you can always tell when someone's used Word to do a poster, can't you? And an advert in a paper or something. <laughs> what is that? Yeah, they do that. Mm. Hey, it's got a good name. Oh, they're awful to develop. What was that one? <laughs> uh, I've wasted too much time picking a font here, I can see that. Um, Just do windings. It needs to be the right one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go for Rockwell, no, Rosewood? What's that? Oh, no, that's uh, Terminal. Let's go for Tim. No, Tim is not very good. Tekton, because it sounds like Tekken. So I'll put that. everyone loves Tekken. Nobody likes Tekken, it's awful. Right, <laughs> so that's my graphic. Uh, I'm just going to do some Jazzo filtering on it. So I'm going to do. Uh, what shall I do on it? Inner Glow or something. No, oh, that's not very nice colour, is it? Oh, I don't think I'm bothered. I'll leave it at that anyway. Okay, so Shizbot. I've got. I need to leave fireworks open, but I want the background to be transparent. So I'm just going to push this up. Very important. I'll just zoom in a minute. Push that up, but make sure that you're not chopping part of your graphic off, because that'd be stupid. Because it'll look awful. 
Okay. It'll give you something to put in your modular testing though, if you've done something stupid with your graphic like that. So I'm just gonna sit it there on my canvas. Right, I need to save this. Now I need to save this in the correct place. All right, so I'm just gonna dump this to start with. So I'll click on save. Uh, I don't want it in my pictures. Now I'm working on my engine. Inside the template folder, there's two parts, coding content. Okay, this is to do with content. So I'm gonna go into the content folder into the graphics folder and I'm going to save it with a nice sensible name. So this is going to be title graphics. So everything I put on here is through my title screen. Okay, so I'm just going to save that. What? In the graphics folder within the template. You're going to content. Remember I'm videoing this for a reason so you can look back and squeeze through it. Right, I've saved that but I've got a grey background, but I need a grey background when I'm working on it, otherwise I'm going to lose it. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the old canvas thing, make it transparent and resave it, and then I'm just going to do that. So one thing that you'll do is you'll tend to change the background colour over and over again, but you have to keep remembering to put it back transparent when you've done your final settings. Okay, right, so that's created it, I will come back to that. Right, in Visual Studio, my graphics folder has not got that file in it. I need to add it. So I need to right click on graphics and I'll say add and then pick existing item because it already exists. Okay, and it drops me in the content folder. So I'm going to go into graphics and I should be able to find it. There it is. And I'm just going to add it. So it should be in my list. Okay. So that's like step one, done. I'm going to close Fireworks because I want to show you how we might edit it. No, don't save it. Right. If I go into the graphics folder and load the graphics thing into Fireworks from that graphics folder, Visual Studio won't know about it. It has to take these assets and compile them into a different format so that it can be used by X and A. All right. they, it doesn't use these PNGs, they're just there to be compiled. They get turned into something else, XMB files. All right. Now we need to, if we make an edit, make sure that these get reconverted. So you must do any editing of a graphic from within Visual Studio. So if I want to edit that title graphic, I need to right click on it and I need to say open with. Now, <clears throat> these are the defaults. Fireworks isn't there and I need to add it. If you stay on the same computer, you won't have to do this again. If you move to another computer, you'll have to do it every time you move. Okay, which isn't ideal. So I'm going to add Fireworks to my edit list. So I just run through, find the executable, and I'm going to mark it as default. Then I have to click OK and it'll load Fireworks up and edit that. So any changes that I now save from this will be reflected by Visual Studio. Okay? That is a common mistake that people make. They do a load of edits of the graphics and then they like define their sprites and nothing shows up. Okay? Because what you've got is transparent background and it hasn't been recompiled, so it doesn't know anything about it. Alright, so we need to make sure we do that carefully. You will all make that mistake several times. Okay, so that's the step one, getting the graphic there. We then need to do a few more things. We've got to create space to store that graphic. Okay, so if we go into the assets folder, this module really should contain all the things to do with sound and graphic and video, if you have any video playing or anything like that. I've set this up, this template, so you've got blocks of space for storing different things. So I've got textures here. So I'm going to create a texture to store this. So I'm just going to say public. I'm not going to say public because I didn't <laughs> type it right. Public texture 2D. D D uh, and I'm going to prefix it with TX. I prefix it with TX so that I can find all my textures easily, even if I can't remember what they're called. By 
type in TX and then that IntelliSense thing will pop up with everything that starts TX. Okay, so I'm going to call this uh, title stuff, which is a really crap name, but that's what I'm going to call it. Okay, so that's step two, creating space to store the graphic. Step three, I need to find the code oops, that loads all the assets. Now, it, I do it this way because I've got a background thread, so this is running in parallel, loading stuff into the memory of the computer while we're doing other things. Okay? So we can actually do a loading screen and you can have sound playing and other things. So this happens in a background thread, okay, for you. You don't need to worry about how that works, you just ask for it to happen. Okay, so we need to go to the start preloader and we need to add an entry for a texture. Okay, so I'm just going to put it here. So I asked to the load manager, I say add a texture. Right, there's two components, two parameters. I have a subroutine that I want to run when the texture's been loaded. That's important because that's going to transfer the texture to the space I've just created. And we have the file name. Okay, now the file name is automatically taken as some area in the content project. So I have to put graphics. Why do I put double slash? Because I've got there graphics slash slash landscape. No, it's graphics slash landscape. Why do I put double slash? Also, um, you've got a what's it called? Ignore. Escape. Escape. Slash is the escape character for strings, weirdly. So if you put slash n, that makes it start a new line. So you can't use, you have to put slash, slash, to say I mean a slash. It's really stupid. Um, it's just one of those things. All right, so it looks weird, but just follow that format. Right, so I'm going to create a subroutine which doesn't exist yet. Crikey. So store title text. I'm going to call it. It'll moan because that doesn't exist. And then I'm going to just say graphics. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste. So I don't. What? I'm going to. I'm not like you, so I'm going to actually edit it. Okay, but I'm copying and pasting so I don't cuck up. Oops. Right, so this one's called title graphics. And again, I'm going to say rename and I'm going to copy the file name, so I don't type the file name wrong, because I know everybody will do that. I do not need the extension. Okay? Case sensitive. No, not file name. File name's another case sensitive. Okay, so that, that step requests that a graphic is loaded for us. Okay, so that's the next step. The next part is to create this subroutine that does something with the graphic. So I'm going to go to one of the other ones, never do anything from scratch, always look at other code. So I'm going to go to the definition, I've just right clicked there on store landscape text. And this is the structure that I'm going to copy now. So I'm going to copy and paste again. <coughs> so copy and paste, uh, and I actually now can't remember what the hell I said I was going to call it. But Visual Studio's got a wicked function. If I hold down Control and do minus, it will go back to previous lines. Now that's what I called it. Store title text. So I'm copying that. I'm going to go back to that one. Okay, and I'm just going to replace that name. I can leave everything else the same. The parameter name is just the same. The bit I've got to change is <coughs> what's happening inside. So this is run by my engine when the texture's been loaded by the background loader. Okay, so I now need to decide what I do. I'm going to store this texture in title stuff. I'm not going to do anything else. Now the reason I've done it in this way is it allows you to, as soon as a graphic has been loaded, you can use it. So you might want to create a sprite. So that's how you create like a loading screen. Alright, so if you've got like a bit of audio that you want to play while everything else is loading up, set that to be loaded first and then start playing it. Okay, if you've got a little graphic, 
that you want to display on screen. So like in a lot of car games, have tires going around or something, or in like Namco games, have Pac-Man going across the screen. They can't do that until Pac-Man's loaded. But as soon as Pac-Man's loaded, and they'll load it on its own, they go, right, okay, create the Pac-Man animation and get it going while we're loading all the other junk. Okay? It used to be when we had all the problems on the PlayStation with slow CD drives, you'd have just like loading dot 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 dot. Yeah, Richard. How do you do games like Jack and Dexter where you're in like this area while it loads, like another room? You write a very clever engine. All games use that now. If you think about something like GTA, it is constantly streaming level data and textures in. Which is why sometimes if you're driving along, if you're driving fast, textures all pop up because the engine's loading them in the background. It's going, oh, I've got yeah, I've got I haven't got the detail. Yeah, that's called level of detail. Lot. <laughs> that's quite complicated. Okay, so not only is the game engines in proper games doing all the complicated rendering, it's actually wasting some time streaming data off your disk and your hard disk. Is call that procedural? No, procedural is when you generate stuff using the functions. So you might generate a map using subroutines rather than someone painstakingly making a map up. I think Rid the last Ridge Racer did that, didn't it? It was procedural city objects it generated. Or something. So Eric, if you had to say your GTA 5 say the graphics popping on a disk, if you downloaded it straight to the drive, would it be faster? Loading in textures? It depends if you're not using the drive. If you're not using the drive for anything else, then yes, it would be. But there's a lot of things that you're doing where you're offloading data to the hard disk at the same time. You know on the PlayStation, when um, if you use that Play TV, it says this might affect... You can record programs while you're playing a game, but it might affect quality. And it does. Because it prioritises the game over the Play TV's disc access. So yeah, that's why on um, the 360 Halo, they said don't install it to the hard disk. Because they'd optimised it for reading off the CD. <laughs> Didn't they? And if you did install it to the hard disk, it really capped it up. Because the streaming engine just didn't like it. Oh. It's the only game I played like a year. Was it? So you played it all choppy. <laughs> right, anyway, getting back on. Right. So at this point, I have got my graphic in my content folder. I've created a texture space called TX Title Stuff to store the graphic. I've asked for the graphic to be loaded and when it's loaded, I've copied the graphic into the texture. I've got now everything in place to use that graphic. Okay, I'm just going to stop the video because it's going to get massive. So that is the standard way of just adding a new graphic to the engine.